2023 will be the final season of the four-team college football playoff. Could the Big Ten send it off with a bang by sending not one, not two, but three of its members to the final edition of the four-team college football playoff? I know it sounds insane, but it's not as crazy as it seems. Great time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Big 10 football content all offseason long. Always mash that like button to spread the word of Big 10 Ted to the masses. These three teams of Orient are the very best chances for the Big 10 to win a national championship in 2023. Like if you're ranking teams 1 through 14 in our beloved Big 10 conference, this is tier number one. These Three are the very best. Every single one of those other teams, they're chasing Michigan, they're chasing Ohio State, and now I think they're starting to chase Penn State um, a little bit as well. So how do we get into a position where we could have three Big Ten teams all at 11-1 and one, play for a national championship within the college football playoff? The first thing you need, utter chaos. Okay, in the Big 12, the Pac-12, And the ACC, we know the SEC is going to send their champion. We know how good they are, right? Um, The ACC, I think, is going to be the biggest monkey wrench at all this. Okay, Florida State, going to have a lot of good talent returning. Uh, They're a dark horse college football playoff type of team, and we know what Clemson has done. I think that's going to be the toughest to happen. But you look at the Big 12 and especially the Pac-12. Like the Pac-12, they need to beat up on each other. There's a lot of really good quarterbacks. There's a lot of good teams in the Pac-12. You need upsets. You need Colorado to get some wins. You need Oregon State to beat some bigger teams. You need them to beat the USC's, the Oregon's, the UCLA's, the Utah's of the world. You can't have a one-loss Pac-12 champion. In the Big 12, same deal. You can't have a one-loss champion. You need the TCUs, the Baylors, the Oklahoma States, the Kansas States. You need those teams to beat Oklahoma and Texas a few times, probably. There might be some scenarios where there might be a two-loss conference champion that could have a chance at maybe getting in over a one-loss, a third one-loss Big 10 team. So there might be some scenarios where you might even need those conference champions to have three losses. But we know it's usually undefeated teams or one loss teams that get into the college football playoff. Those two loss teams, generally, it's not a very good chance for them to sneak in, even if they win a conference championship. So you can't have any one loss conference champions in the ACC the Big 12 or the Pac-12. That's the first thing. The second thing is when we actually get in to Big 10 play and they all need to beat. We talk about beating up on each other in other conferences. These three teams need to all beat one another. Okay, when you talk about these games and these are gonna be some really big games in the Big 10 this season. The first one you take a look at, October 21st, Penn State at Ohio State. Buckeyes gotta win this one. But Penn State can't let it get away from them early in the season. They got to look good in a loss. They look good in a loss at home um, this year where they hung with Ohio State. It's got to be a similar type of thing, but the final score has probably got to be within 10 points there for the Nittany Lions to remain respectable there at that point in the season. You look at November 11th, I think this is going to be an awesome game, right? You're probably going to have a whiteout at night, Big Ten Saturday night, NBC. It's going to be an electric atmosphere. You look at that Penn State-Ohio State game a couple of weeks later, Penn State comes through and gets a big-time win over Michigan. This is a scenario where Penn State maybe could make a statement. They win by 17. I'm not sure if it hurts Michigan that much leading up uh, until then. And, of course, the final game of the season, Michigan getting the win over Ohio State. All of those teams go 11-1. and All of those teams that lost were competitive in their losses. And all the teams that won have some big time wins within the conference. That those are the things that is how you get three big 10 teams into the college football playoff. Now, naturally considering what we said at the beginning of the video, all the teams in the big 10 are chasing these three teams. There's going to be some obstacles. So let's go over the obstacles for all three teams, three big 10 games 
that could maybe derail three 11 and one teams within um, the Big Ten East. The first one, September 23rd, Iowa traveling to Penn State. Now, I know Penn State has to play West Virginia, right? Renewing that rivalry. But most of the games before this one for Penn State will be fairly easy, allow Drew Allard to gain some confidence early on. But when we get to this game, you know that Iowa defense, the ball Hawkeyes are going to be doing just that. This is an aggressive defense under Phil Parker and especially the secondary. Like you look at Quinn Schulte, you look at Xavier and Wampa, and then you look at Cooper DeGene, the turnover machine. This is going to be a big test for a young quarterback in Drew Alar. How good is he going to be? Can he go up against one of the very best defenses, one of the very best secondaries in the Big Ten and maybe in all of college football at this point? Can he protect the football against Iowa, a team that loves to force turnovers, that loves to bait you into mistakes? What kind of Big Ten quarterback will Drew Allar be in this season? That's going to be a big-time obstacle um, for Penn State because I think their schedule is actually pretty favorable uh, to go 11-1. and one. you got to look at October 21st, Michigan at Michigan State. So I don't think – Michigan State's going to be this great team. I think they could improve. I think they could be bowl eligible, seven and five, eight and four type of se- type of team. But I think the reason why maybe this one is difficult is the games before it for the Michigan Wolverines. You look at this game three weeks ahead of time. Michigan has to travel to Nebraska. Like so let's say Nebraska gets that big win in Boulder up in the mountains. Okay, they beat Colorado. They gain momentum, and then they're going in. They host Michigan. I think Michigan's going to win. But what if that's a dogfight into the fourth quarter the very next week? Michigan has to play for the Little Brown Jug against Minnesota on the road. Back-to-back games at Nebraska and then at Minnesota. Playing the Gophers is never easy. And then they play Indiana and then they're at Michigan State. So three out of those four games middle of the season for Michigan all on the road. At Nebraska, at Minnesota, and at Michigan State, if they do get through that four-game stretch unscathed, it's not going to be easy, and they're going to take some bumps and bruises on the way. We know the heat is going to be there. When you talk about you hate me and I hate you type of rivalries, Michigan, Michigan State tops the list in the Big Ten Conference and maybe in all of college football, um, if you ask me. The last one, October 28th, we could see some offense, baby. Ohio State at Wisconsin. This has possible 20 10 vibes, right? Ohio State, number one in the country, going into Madison, Wisconsin, was ranked, what was it, 18, 17, somewhere near the top 15, but not quite in the top 15 at that moment in time. I was there in attendance at the lower bowl in Camp Randall Stadium, night game, under the lights, raucous atmosphere, college town, Madison, Wisconsin, Look, when you look at Wisconsin and their crossover games are very favorable against the Big Ten East. Look, their only really tough game early in the season out of conference is going up uh, to Washington and in Pullman when they take on Washington State. I think Wisconsin's going to be able to build up a lot of momentum into this game um, in late October. And this could be a big-time obstacle for, for the Ohio State Buckeyes in getting into the college football playoff. Ohio State also has an obstacle early in the season on September 23rd when they got to travel to South Bend to play Notre Dame. So there are some obstacles to get to three 11-1 teams in the Big Ten Conference. I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think the impossible can happen? Do you think three Big Ten teams can make the college football playoff? 2023, I laid out the scenarios. I laid out the obstacles. Let me know what you guys think. Comment in the comment below about all things college football playoff 2023. Three teams making it. Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one.